Hello everyone, Techman Pat here, welcome back. Today we're diving into one of the most misunderstood bits of home solar and battery systems, the inverter. Think of the inverter as the heart of your system. It converts the DC electricity from your solar panels and battery into the AC your appliances eat for breakfast. Pick one that's too small and it'll choke. Pick one that's too big and you've wasted money on muscle you'll never use. I'm gonna cover why inverter size matters, how to size it based on your home's peak usage, tricky three-phase systems, how your solar panels and battery play into it, and a few state-specific quirks for Australia. So stick around for practical tips and tap the like button and subscribe button if this video helped you. So let's get started by rolling the intro. An inverter's size is measured in kilowatts and tells you the maximum continuous power it can pump into your home. This affects two key things, how much you can run at once. So if your inverter is rated at three kilowatts, you try and run a five kilowatt load, the inverter will either shut down, reduce the output, or the extra power will come from the grid in a battery system like this. A properly sized inverter makes sure your aircon oven and kettle can all work together without popping the breakers. Now, how fast your battery charges or discharges is another one. A small inverter can be basically a bottleneck. For example, with a three kilowatt inverter, even if your solar panels are producing six kilowatts of energy, you can only charge the battery at three kilowatts. It's like trying to fill a swimming pool with a garden hose. But does bigger always equal better? Well, not always. Your goal is the Goldilocks zone. Big enough for your peak load with a bit of headroom, but not so big that it sits around twiddling its heat sinks. In general, a single phase home can have up to 10 kVA of inverter capacity with a five kilowatt export limit. For multi-phase homes, each single phase is capped at five kVA, meaning you can usually install up to 15 kilowatts total without additional permits. Now in practice, there are exceptions. Western Australia, for example, applies stricter rules under Western power. Three phase homes can reach to 15 kilowatt total, but each phase is still restricted to a 1.5 kilowatt export limit. And lastly, you cannot participate in the two cent buyback when your inverter is above five kilowatts. So uh, not really a big loss when you have a battery. So let's start with a single phase home. The simplest way to size an inverter is to add up the maximum power you might draw at once. And usually it'll be peaking around the evening. So let's run through a hypothetical situation. You have your in-laws coming over for dinner. So your oven is drawing two kilowatts. The electric cooktop is drawing three kilowatts. The kettle is two kilowatts and your mother-in-law says it's cold and it turns on the heater for another two kilowatts. With all that in mind, you're pulling about nine kilowatts. Now we add a buffer, let's say 20% to handle the surges when the heater turns on or maybe the oven is heating up. And look, you're getting to around 11 kilowatts of well beyond a 10 kilowatt inverter capacity. So if you genuinely want to cover every appliance simultaneously, you need something pretty much size to the total of it. Now, in reality, most homes don't run everything at once and many people naturally stagger their big loads. So you might turn the oven on, then the kettle comes on a little later and goes off after a little while. Now, if you've got a large home, uh, let's say with multiple air cons, electric underfloor heating, pool pumps, or an EV charger, you might consider at least 10 kilowatts inverter. Remember, you'll need enough solar panels or battery output to feed a 10 kilowatt inverter if you really want to run completely off grid or at least off solar. And that is something you need to consider when looking into a battery system. Check how much the entire stack can actually output. Different versions of the same product will potentially have smaller and less output. So meaning you're not gonna be able to power a lot if your battery can't keep up with your inverter. Now onto three phase systems, which require a bit of balancing. Many large homes in Australia have three phase power. This means your home is fed by three separate lines that share the load. If you install a three phase solar inverter, it will typically split its output equally across those phases. For example, a nine kilowatt three phase inverter will deliver up to three kilowatts per phase. That's great for balancing the grid, but can catch you out if your big appliance is on a single phase, let's say you have a 
five kilowatt ducted air conditioner on phase A. Even with a nine kilowatt solar inverter, pumping away, you'll only get three kilowatts on that phase. The other six kilowatt goes to phase B and C. It might be exported or uh, it might power smaller loads. You'll still end up importing power on phase A while exporting on the others. Cost-wise, it shouldn't be an issue because your home would be installed with a smart meter that accounts for this import export imbalance and you should not end up paying for kilowatt hour units that you pull from the grid but export on another phase. However, the problem would be is if you have an off-grid situation where the grid goes down and you want to power your home with one of the phases and one of the items there is beyond the limit and they can't share. But some manufacturers advertise unbalanced three phase inverters that can push more power to one phase. Though in reality, standards like the ASNZS4777 limit how much imbalance is allowed. For example, a 10 kilowatt inverter might be restricted to, to about three kilowatts per phase in this unbalanced world. You can't just shove all 10 kilowatts down a single line. So always check the spec sheet and ask your installer how much imbalance it can handle. If you wanna back up your whole home during a blackout, three phase adds more complexity and actually time to install. I'm on day one, day two is still to come. Now panels. Do your panels actually pair up well with your inverter? A lot of people will get a bit of a shock or a surprise when they move to a battery system that they need to upgrade their panels to. The extra capacity stretches your production in the mornings and afternoons to both power the home and fill your battery for the evening. So if you do jump to a bigger inverter, let's say 10 kilowatts, it's likely you'll need to add more panels to make use of that capacity. A 10 kilowatt inverter with only 6.6 .6 kilowatts of panels will be underutilized. You'll seldom see output beyond 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Now, what if you already have old solar arrays? Well, the good news is you don't always have to replace your panels to add a battery. Many of you will add a battery using AC coupling where the battery has its own built-in inverter and connects to the AC side of the switchboard. This makes retrofitting simple and doesn't require touching your existing solar inverter. And if you do want to upgrade your solar inverter and tie the battery on the DC side, which is this, a hybrid inverter, you will need to ensure your existing panels are compatible with the voltage and current limitations of the old panels. And they can offer be restrung to suit, which means combining a few of them to get the right voltages. But if they're too small or like earlier than 2021, for example, you might consider adding or replacing them completely. And that way you can at least make the most of the sun that comes in, power your battery and power your home. So to wrap up, here's what I've done since the last update. I initially planned to use a five kilowatt inverter for my three phase home with a 25 kilowatt hour battery and just 6.6 .6 kilowatts of panels. Many people suggested otherwise, but after reviewing my house usage, uh, the numbers made sense at the time. I have a gas water heater, which doesn't need that many kilowatts, a, a gas stove and only a 10 amp wall plug oven. And I have access to eight cents kilowatt hour daytime tariffs. So I could use that to top up the battery for the peak period, which is 54 cents during the evening and like 24 cents at night. So it would help me keep the overall costs of the system down and then utilize that onto the evening. Also, blackout protection is limited to the inverter's maximum output. So with a five kilowatt unit using more than that during an outage, will trip it. With that in mind, I decided to double both my panels and my inverter. This gave me more headroom for future upgrades like the electric cooktop and water heater and lets me feed the battery from solar rather than relying on a tariff that may not exist in the future. So choosing the right inverter comes down to the balance of your budget versus the current needs, potentially the future needs, and you know even the local network rules and the inverter's capabilities. So make the right call and your solar battery system will quietly keep your home running eliminate your bills potentially and provide backup when the grid goes down. The one thing I really want to reiterate is please check whether your batteries can actually output the required kilowatt peaks that your inverter can then push across your home. Because sometimes people will look at it and go, well, I've got a 15 kilowatt inverter, but the batteries that they've chosen can max out at seven and a half kilowatts. So make sure you double check what comes out of here, what goes into here, and then you'll be golden. And you know, the solar panels, well, you can always add more, but it's always nice to do it all at once. Let me know your thoughts below. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.